Hello, welcome to this video. On this video, I am going to go through um, a scenario that must have existed in uh, the United States of America for the black people that resided there, the slaves and ex-slaves, um, to be able to create jazz and um, to be responsible for all its elements in its entirety and so the appendage that um, many people seem to want to give it of black music um, that, um, that is worthy of that despite the fact that no other race on the planet seems to identify any other sort of form of music by the shade or colour of their skin which make, makes me slightly suspect that if um, all these claims about white supremacy are true, the fact that um, some black Americans want to call their music black music may have well been the fact that they've been duped by a certain uh, narrative there, which will then fence off, um, it will segregate and nullify the importance of this music in the grand cultural scheme. Okay, so if uh, that's what everybody wants, let's go with this. So, African people arrived in America in 1619, brought over as slaves. They were the first slaves in America, except they weren't, were they? There was Irish slaves, there were Scottish slaves. And of course, when Columbus arrived, um, Native Americans were enslaved from day one. So slavery had existed across the whole of the continent. But uh, if we ignore that and just imagine that there's um, African slaves, into those slave communities, they were completely isolated. And so they were able then to uh, maintain the African culture through the generations, except they weren't able to do that, were they? Because their culture was taken away from them. You know, within a few generations, they were having to imagine their culture, imagine it from passed down through their families, except, oh, forget that as well, their families were broken up. So, you know, the white uh, supremacy that had enslaved them was doing their best to remove everything from them. All right, so they had to create their own culture. But of course, existing in America, they would never have pulled anything from anything around them. They wouldn't have been able to, uh, you know, create a culture out of the Irish folk songs, Scottish folk songs, the uh, military music, the other folk music that was around them. They wouldn't have done that at all. I suppose because they were in plantations all on their own, they were kept away. Oh no, they weren't because Native Americans were in those, uh, on those plantations and they were slaves as well. In fact, um, the justification by white people for slavery was a triangle and that triangle put, put at the top white people. In the middle, there was a group of, of of mixed race people that uh, although lower than the whites weren't low enough to be enslaved and at the bottom were three categories one was the black one was the Native American and the other was the Zambo and Zambo was a mixture of Native American and black people so black and Native Americans were considered um, able to have slaves but also um, once the white people had decided that certain Native American groups could be civilized, they were given land and they were given um, opportunities to um, access some, if, but not all, but some of the culture that they had brought into this country. And in doing that, they um, had slaves themselves. Um, the uh, um, black Americans that were enslaved by the Native Americans found that their um, lot there was a lot better and some of the um, horrors that um, the slaves had under white slave owners they didn't have under Native Americans which created a contact, two double con contacts between Native American people and um, black people which goes throughout um, American history but of course we'll imagine that never happened shall we and it was just black Americans that were enslaved. Um, a fight begins. A fight begins to um, eradicate slavery. This has happened because here in the UK, um, our Western liberal democracy and our enlightenment science has made us realize that um, this triangle that places white people at the top and then black people at the bottom was utterly um, untrue. Now that fact was being stated by certain people, but um, at that time, 
there was an ideology there that they had to fight against. And in America, they went slam up against that, uh, that um, ideology. Some people believed what they believed and they would not be budged despite anybody telling them facts that, that argued against it, ideology had set in. I might return to how the ideology has set in and how we are ideologically captured right now in Western culture, but let me just go through uh, my argument for how jazz was black music and try and ignore all this stuff as we go through. So, the Civil War happens. Uh, it, the black slaves are freed and they're thrown out into the world. They're thrown out into a world of segregation. Right, the the whites now argue that um, you know black people but are equal but different. They must be kept apart. Right, the Jim Crow wasn't about saying black people are inferior. Right, it was about saying they were different, and we should put them apart. A little bit like saying this music is black music and this music is white music, and these students at university should have their own campus to go to and their own place to live, and we should all separate the cultures out. We should mix them because then they're being polluted aren't they the language of racism the language of the right wing all right anyway let's forget that shall we the slaves are released into Jim Crow which was perfectly okay wasn't it it was just they were different right but the thing is they've got the Ku Klux Klan after them and everybody thinks that they're a lower thing and they've got minstrelsy they've got blackface which continually takes the mickey out of the culture that they have developed right which of course is all their own and isn't influenced by that and some black musicians who want to be able to work have to work within minstrelsy creating the first black suit superstars in America, black superstars that performed in blackface, but let's erase the contribution of those incredible artists because they're in blackface and we don't like blackface now. And anything we don't like, we have to eradicate. We have to ignore. We have to push it away and say it didn't exist. Like Native Americans being involved and, and um, um, not only being involved in the culture, you know, but people marrying and having families and the fact that nobody in America is fully black or fully white that it's a whole country of mixed race people but let's deny that shall we because again it comes back to this pollution thing we're talking about blackness black culture and we're gonna you know like that marcus garvey you know sort of pan-african thing that is there now in jazz without a doubt let's just put that aside you know so um, i'm i'm i've got to stick i've got to stick to this story right so now um Certain port cities, right, um, these freed, um, you know, black people that are still having a whole ton of prejudices and, and they're being segregated, they, they've got a number of places to go to. They can go to the Native American communities, and they do, right? But also, the Native Americans want to find some places. Segregation is going on. But there's certain towns, especially port cities like New Orleans, where there's a much bigger mishmash of cultures, especially between Native Americans and um, black Americans, but also Creoles and whites. But we'll just... The fact that jazz emerges in New Orleans and there is less segregation there, we will sort of ignore that. Because logically... If we're talking about this pure black cultural force that came through and invented jazz, it couldn't have, it, why would it happen in a place where it's more integrated? And then the early jazz groups, pre-Buddy Bolden, you know, the jazz groups that were created by people like Papa Jack Lane and the Creoles played in, like uh, Cindy Bechet, the fact that these bands were integrated, they were in, in, integrated despite the pressure Right, so jazz is born out of this sort of integration, which makes it an incredibly powerful form because it's fighting the white supremacy that exists in America. But we'll ignore that aspect of jazz because really it doesn't, it, it, you know, what if we were, if Andy's right, you know, let us say that, you know, the harmony and the instrumentation is European and that the rhythms are, are a combination sort of remembered African cultural rhythms that maybe survived in Congo Square like 50 years before jazz was born but there's also Native American you know um, rhythms in there because Native American music's got um, like three over two polyrhythms and it's got syncopation and it's in 4-4 four four and not 2-4 but there's a big load of marching music and also the, the church music you know the Pentecostal church music which is also uh, um, you know the, the fusion between you know 
black Americans and European Christianity. You know, it's, it, it seems to be all a fusion, doesn't it? It all see every single aspect of it. There is not one aspect that we can point to in jazz and say that is black. Not even the rhythms, not even the vocalizations, not the song structure, because there's bits coming in from Irish folk music, Scottish folk music. There's techniques coming in from Italy and France. You know, there's stuff coming in from Latin America. It's a great big thing. And nobody, nobody in this big, big gumbo, right? Nobody has any ability to claim it in terms structurally for themselves. Nobody has. But the thing is, right, what black musicians brought to it was their sense of um, suffering and the, the stain of slavery. So surely that X factor, Andy, surely that, you know, should be argued that that makes it. But all these influences are there, but it's, it's the experience, the experience of black people and Native American people. Uh, maybe we just ignore the Native American people. Maybe, you know, it's not like they haven't been wiped off the face of the cultural landscape of the United States of America completely. Right? Even though they're the original people in that country, even though they have been there at every step of the way in terms of creating the culture and the history of that country, let's just wipe them out. And why are we going to sacrifice them? Because it's more important to make the claim that black people are important because they invented jazz. Okay? Despite all the history and proof that it is not the case, right? That jazz is the American music form made in America. Now, I've said this on every single video, and I wonder why the next comment seems to fall on deaf ears amongst certain people who are watching this channel, right? So I'm going to say it now. The biggest, most important, the most huge input into the creation of jazz and blues, and therefore all the 20th century popular music forms, is the input from genius black American musicians and that the greatest geniuses and the most innovative of the of everybody that created jazz everybody at the peak at the top as you will see if you go and look at my lists of the greatest jazz musicians that all those positions are occupied by black American geniuses geniuses beyond beyond my comprehension and beyond your comprehension and for anybody to say the word we created jazz which people have had the gall on this channel in the comments to put and it makes me angry that they have the gall to compare themselves and put themselves in the same class like some wimpy kids standing next to the hard kid and shouting and bullying knowing that if a fight ensues he'll be able to stand behind his big mate while they bash somebody in the face probably a native american right as they sit there right as they sit there in their arrogance saying we invented black blues we invented jazz can you imagine the gall to be able to say that? You know, we, me, I invented science. We invented um, modern civilization. We invented the Industrial Revolution. We invented the laws of thermodynamics. We invented the theory of relativity. We came up with the idea of evolution. We bought, built all the biggest bridges and we built a train that went across a whole world. It, what is going on that anybody, any race wants to fight, you know, try and grab some sort of pride by aligning themselves because of their genetic um, inheritance with a bunch of geniuses from another era that culturally have nothing to do with them. Now, because I know they are shouting, it's a cultural thing, it's a cultural thing. Of course black Americans have a cultural thing. If you're going to make a film about a black person and you are not a black person, how can you, you know, really pull from personal experience and know what it's like to be be a black person in America but no black person in America now has any idea what it was like to be Louis Armstrong or Buddy Bolden right because the culture was so different and if you are arguing that that's not the case you are denying the suffering you are de denying the prejudice that the, your forebears went through 
And when I say your, remember there's white people who have exactly the same ancestry as you. Okay? Because it is fluid. This is ridiculous. This is race baiting. This is racism 101. All right? Um, I come from a mixed race family and that is my truth. And that is why I see the hypocrisy of people doing it. You know, of being able to claim that they have some sort of cultural purchase because of the colour of their skin. Right? What is it that people are lesser that they're not afforded the same rights as you to claim cultural forms as your own or be able to turn around and say you're white supremacist and that I'm part of a group and I have to take on because I'm white right I have to take on the sins of all my forefathers but not the good stuff and then black people are allowed to only take the good stuff of their forefathers and ignore the fact that slavery, the word slavery, comes from the enslavement of white people, the Slavs, by African people. And the only reason why we could have a slave trade is because of the horrendous slavery that, and which inherited from Africa the brutality of that slavery. Do not come to me saying, you know, that the slaves in slavery Africa, you know, were different. They were like, you know, members of the family. That went on as well. It went on as well. But there was brutality. It, um, and this is why there is so, the, the, you know, evidence of the slave trade in Africa is not there because the males were castrated, weren't they? Right? And uh, not all of them. But that did happen. Okay? Think about what you're arguing and think what you're saying. Because I know, I believe me, as I say these things, because I'm a, up, up against ideologically captured people, right? Ideologically captured people, I know the answers that are going to come back. Right? And why are they ideologically captured? I'm going to tell you why now. Okay? Because... When Marxism didn't quite work, when Lenin decided to pick that the only way to um, instigate Marxism in uh, Soviet Russia was through totalitarianism, certain Marxists realised that wasn't the way to go. They were called the Frankfurt School and they started to come up with ideas, right? After the Second World War, when people looked at Nazism and the stain of Nazism, the Frankfurt School... Um, started to realise or came up with the idea that there were, that stain was cultural, that there was something in Nazi culture that wasn't right. And that had to be educated out. And the Frankfurt School said that if we take the stain of Nazis and we have to fight against the narrative that allowed that to happen, because philosophers at that time could not work out why a civilised Western di democracy could do that. And um, you've got to remember, at the end of the Second World War, that um, Berlin was divided up into three areas, and those three areas were controlled by the English, the Americans, and the Russians. And in those areas, there was um, a um, there was a cultural um, input from these three countries, including Soviet Russia, to make the German people aware of what had happened in their country. Right, so. The Frankfurt School had, was based in Frankfurt. They'd had to get out of Nazi Germany. They'd seen it first time. First they went to Switzerland, they went to uh, Geneva, and then they took a place in America, in the United States of America. And that academic group plots itself down in America. Right, it, it looks at what's going on and it sees and it's frightened of the fact that this could happen again. Is Nazism gonna happen again? Right. And they're they obviously, you know, the Frankfurt School's set up by Marxists, but they're not Marxists like, you know, Marxist Leninists. It's a different type of Marxism. It's a cultural Marxism. Now, that phrase has been, you know, used in ways that I do not like at all. What what's the Frankfurt School was to look at culture and how culture works. And the Frankfurt School decided that the only way to combat this was through education, through making the children realize the errors of the the civilizations that they existed in Western culture, all right? Um, when they looked at, you know, British culture and certain other cultures in Europe, the big saying on them was colonialism, 
Colonialism was an awful thing. We'd gone out and done all these terrible things around the world. Um, this had to ignore a, um, a lot of the good things that um, colonialism created. Um, and uh, this is something when, if you've been indoctrinated in that ideology, will stick in your throat. But I may come back to that. You see, I'm going to have to explain a lot of stuff because these people wriggle, right? Um, so they are like, colonialism bad. And that's it. And you can't say anything against that. In America, that Western civilization, of course, the great stain was slavery. And so the Frankfurt School came up with this meta-narrative where we're going to educate the youth through schools and universities to see the problems with fascism, right, Nazism, with colonialism, and with um, the slavery in America. And that all came under the banner of the white supremacy. Now, the problem with the idea of the white supremacy is it starts to play into the ideas that the Nazi had all along, right? Because you've got to remember the Nazis and the um, fascists actually came from socialism. And um, Hitler and Mussolini were able to get their ec ec economies under control because they um, instigated incredibly socialist networks on the their countries and anybody who argues against that does not understand the history i have gone deep into that and i do i have to have a real video just to explain that does you know do those people who have been ide ideologically captured really think that they they can argue that they that that nazi germany was not socialist you know they're gonna have to argue that that government had no control over the means of production <laughs> oh god Go on, try it. But he didn't actually, it was still owned by private people. Oh yeah, don't go private people. And what if they didn't do what the Nazi party wanted? Bloody hell, this, this is a joke. It's a joke. And if you're wondering why these ideas are so popular, it's because the Frankfurt School, being located in America, did get these ideas into the, into the ac ac academy. Right, and that's gone through the Western world. Every, I'm a teacher and I know that I know what those essays are that we have to set and I know when you go to university, it doesn't matter what subject you are studying, if you're studying English or art or music, you're going to have to write essays on intersectionality, critical race theory, and you're going to have to get an understanding of that philosophy and there will be no counter argument against that in the acad, 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 I can't say it, academy. What is wrong with me? There will be no argument against that there, right? I'm a teacher, I know. If you do stand up and even say the counter argument, even though you don't agree, like you're supposed to be, like the idea that I come up with the teacher, you know, here's one argument, and here's, if you do that, you will get into trouble. There's certain areas, right? And so if I was to stand up in a music college and state that jazz was not black music, that there's issues about that and create a counter narrative to discuss it through, you know, um, because the jury's out, I tell you something now. The truth is nobody really knows how jazz developed. Nobody knows. Why? Because of the racism at the time. Nobody thought it was important. We have no idea what's happening in 1870, 1880, right? We, there are things we can study and there are things we can make, you know, historically. And also we can use our ears and we can listen to the music. But we don't know for sure. This is why the discussion that needs to happen. Um, I, I counter this on this channel. I come as a teacher. Now, people have said this to me. They've said, YouTube is not a place to have reasoned arguments. And they're right. And I was wrong. Okay, I can see that it's not a place to have reasons arguments. That's the first thing. Um, so, um, where are we? Uh, but I'm a teacher <laughs> and I believe in those values. I don't come here when I say I don't think that, um, you know, jazz is black music. Look at the title. I don't think. Let's have a conversation. Well, is it or isn't it? You know, let's start to go through. God, that's challenging. That's challenging the, 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 the established narrative, isn't it? It's, it's challenging it. Yeah, I know. But if you look at the established narrative and where it's come from and the history of just this discovery of Horkheimer and Marcuse and Theodore Adorno and all those ideas and how they've gone into our culture 
and then how uh, Chairman Mao in China was able to create a stable communist country by uh, starting off having his Red Army of very young people that had been indoctrinated and were quite happy to go up to the intellectuals that lived in China and say, you either shut up or we take you away and you disappear. Right. And uh, over the last week, I, I've, had, I've had a real, you know, depressing, anxious time thinking about this. Because uh, because the best thing, and people were warning me, they were saying, shut up, Andy, you need to shut up about this. You don't want to get cancelled. You need to shut up. And I'm sat there thinking, yeah, I, 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 maybe I just shut up. Maybe I don't have this conversation. Maybe we let these, let these ideologically captured people control the narrative like they obviously want to. Because they're not coming up with reasoned arguments. The people who have come up with reasoned arguments, I have no problem with. And often at the end of those conversations, I've turned around and said, you know, thanks for a great conversation. But those who have no um, counter argument and just want to call you um, a racist or call you, what was the one this morning that came through? A Neanderthal. And I thought that was incredible that someone was that was arguing against, you know, an identitarian arguing for identity politics was so quick to write the Neanderthals off. Right. The Neanderthals were not taken out by Cro-Magnon man, <laughs> you know, uh, by Homo erectus or whatever it was. We integrated with them. And the thing is that I think the reason why they may have, have that culture disappeared it's because the uh, archaeologists that study the Neanderthals is they seem to be more aesthetic. They were more artistic. Right? The, art, the artists will always suffer. Go and watch Edward Scissorhands and you will see that the thing that makes you so special as an artist is the things that hurts you and everybody else around you. And I know that the geniuses that created jazz were like that. And I as a white British person, I have empathy for that. I've taught creative people and I hope I'm a creative person myself. And it's a torture to be like that. And when I listen to their music, I hear that more than any racial or cultural thing. All right. So here I am. I hopefully have gone through and shown you that there's nobody can argue in this pure black purity that black people created this one thing. No race has ever done that in history. Ever. Right? And if there was some isolated group, they probably didn't do anything creative because creativity relies on the little bit of dirt that goes in the shell that creates the pearl. All right? And that's what America had in bucket loads, right? Um, I am not denying the suffering of um, black Americans and the continual suffering that goes on in racism that exists in the world. God, I know about racism from my per perspective as a white person that doesn't get any racism. Although, being shouting that I'm a white supremacist and being blamed for all the... Well, I'm sat there going, hang on, I wasn't the colonialist. Why am I getting blamed for all this? I've been in, involved in certain legal things recently where I've been told categorically that if I was black, I would be in a much better position. Right? I don't mind that, you know. It's, it is the way it is. I ain't going to moan about it, but uh, it seems like racism to me. Oh, but you can't be racist against white people, can you? What the hell? We know we are living in a world where facts don't matter. Right, when racism becomes a thing that white people do to blacks, think about it. There's people arguing that and trying to make that stand up and not seeing that is exactly what the Nazis were doing to the Jews and that was how they justified it. And it's exactly how the white supremacy enslaved the blacks. It's the triangle. <sighs> I am going to keep coming back to this because I am not a coward. Right, I'm going to keep coming and arguing it. And those are the people that were ideologically captured. They are ideologically captured and I've called them out. And when they come and they make their comments and they start saying this is ridiculous and you don't know anything and all that type of stuff. Or, it's not even like that. You know, it's just they'll say their thing at the end and goes, jazz was created by black people. It's black music. And they just state it as though if chanting it over and over again will make it magically the truth. Um, but I want to state at the end of this. 
Um, my whole life was changed by jazz. My whole life was changed by black American musicians and other black musicians. I hold them in the highest. I think the greatest 20th century artists are black people. That's what I believe. I don't believe it's because they're black. I believe it's the unique position that they're in in America and the fact that genius needs to find a way often. All right? Um, I don't want to get into going, oh, look, the black person was as good as the white person there, if not better. Because I don't think like that and I find that extremely racist and I find that that is what is going on here. All right? Um, so... It's, I find it quite upsetting and depressing to be accused of being a racist. Not many people have done it, and some person said that I can't see any uh, comments like this. It was really funny, because about two comments down, somebody had called me a racist. But when that people are that aggressive, YouTube will take it off, and they put it into these comments for, to review. And then there's a secondary one, even behind that, if it's really offensive, they're hidden. I can get in and see them, but they only stay, stay there for about three or four weeks, and then they're deleted. So if I don't see them, I don't see them. But when I go and look into that folder, it's a cesspit. An absolute trolling cesspit of weirdos. All right? And I have to also get my head around that, you know, as this channel gets more successful, those people will emerge. But hopefully, those who love music and they love a good argument and they love the fact that I may say something and I might be right and I might be wrong, you know, it may be the case that jazz is black music, but if it is, it will be a philosophical um, claim. We have to get the philosophy right. And at the moment, I could not say it because philosophically, and, and I'm talking about ethically, it doesn't seem correct to say that. And it's not true. End of the video. Bye-bye.